Where is the coca lina mahai di hali di ham? Ham. Ham. All right. Yeah, we got to talk about a serious one today. Now, before you get to the chopping off of the heads and the bombs, hold on one moment and let me just talk to you. What do I got to talk to you about? I got to talk to you about two things. The history of anti-blackness within the Arab world and why blacks from the West, Africans and particularly American Africans, why we side-eye black Muslims, why we look at y'all a little funny. Yeah, so let me let me start off saying uh, a few things here. Um, you never want to throw a whole religion out or any group of people you want to say that they're all bad because that's never the truth let me let me speak about islam first um our greatest leaders in in black america have been muslims um first off malcolm x malcolm shabazz he 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 woke us up in the 60s like no one has ever done before and he came from being a criminal a pimp a thief and he changed dramatically and what he what changed him was Islam. You could say it was a different form of Islam, but it still had the basic tenets tenets of it. And Islam changed that brother. Uh another the greatest man, not just black man, to me in history is Muhammad Ali. This man is the epitome of what it is to be a man, not just a black man, but a man. I mean, the man was smooth, the man uh, tell you exactly what's on his mind, he was honorable. He'll tell you that he's the greatest and then he'll get in the ring and he'll show you the man was a great man and We stand on his pillars. We stand on his shoulders So I'm not here to throw the whole religion out at all But there there's an issue. There's an issue that I see with Muslims in general and particularly black Muslims You don't want to separate Arabs and the Arab world from Islam you don't want to admit to the issues that go on in the greater Arab world you don't want to admit that you're a third class backseat citizen within the Arab world and why is this important because the Arab world controls the Muslim world um, Why, why I think that the black Muslims don't want to admit to this, some do, some do, we've seen it lately, but only over the last 30 years, we don't talk about the greater history of, of, of racism within the Arab world, or maybe they don't know it, but the reason I think it is, and is that a lot of black Muslims, particularly on the African continent, get upset whenever we talk about the racism within the Arab world, is because a lot of you think that you're different, or that being a Muslim makes you separate from other black people around the world, other Africans. Um, I hear a lot of a lot of stuff saying that blackness is something new that the white man came and made up this word black. That's 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 completely untrue. The idea of blackness goes back extremely far. Um, even the Prophet Muhammad, in his last his last sermon, it was particularly on racism. What does he say? He says there is no black above white, no white above black, no Arab above non-Arab, non-Arab above Arab. So he's speaking about racism. It's something that he speaks over consistently. That's why it's so strange to see this anti-blackness within the Arab world and the greater Muslim world when uh, the holy book and the, the, the religion strictly goes against it. So this that's muhammad speaking on it then you have the greeks of course which named uh which called africans ethiopians which means burnt face so they were relating to this idea of blackness and the ethiopians speak greatly about people being black herodotus says that the egyptians are black um aristotle says that the egyptians and the nubians are black and that they're also cowards because of their black skin um so it's something that went on and then 
there's the great Muslim, the great black Muslim scientist, Abu Uthman, better known as Al Jahiz. This man is the man who single-handedly broke down that wall of, of what I would call a white supremacy block on my mind because uh, in my younger younger days I have to admit I was always trying to please non-black people to show them that I'm not like the rest like a lot of y'all like a lot of the like, like a lot of the black Muslims we want to they want to show we want to show that we're not like those those other blacks whether it be the blacks in the ghetto or whether it be the blacks who live in the bush and walk around with their breasts out we want to act like oh we're not like them see how arab i can be we we, they, we always want to throw that in all of us it's the same thing it's the same thing there's no difference between that 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 black muslim historically trying to show how much of an arab it be can be and these these American blacks who do heinous things for the American government around the world and try to tell themselves that they are American and they're not a third class citizen. No, you're a third class citizen. Both of you are third class citizens. This is the way the world is currently. If you are black, you're at the bottom. I'm not black. It, okay, all right, all right. If you're not black, go marry their daughter. Go marry even a low class Arab's daughter. You, you can't do it. Anybody in the Muslim world it's not even Arab. It's a shameful thing to have a black marrying your your daughter. It's just the truth, and you all know it. So, we, we we why am I talking about this? We see so much pain that the black Muslims go through in the Arab world. Um, I'm gonna get back to Abu Uthman in a second. We we see black Muslims who are servants getting thrown out of windows in Arabia. And all around the Arab world, we see you guys getting beat. We see you guys getting slave traded. How are Muslims slave trading Muslims? Not all of them are Muslims, but a lot of them are Muslims who went into Libya and they're getting slave traded. And it's just like, what? Y'all, what's wrong with y'all? I remember there was a lot of there was a lot of upheaval about that, and everyone was all mad. And I actually thought, hey, maybe the other Africans are going to go in there and save their people from slavery. But in the end, no, everybody just backed down. So. Maybe there is a lot of truth, some truth to uh, the black not being, well, the black being a coward is what they say. Um, I don't think that's it. I think we're a very docile people. I think we have an inferiority complex all around the planet. And I think that's why we would sell our own out, literally in this case, at the behest of another to show how American we could be or to show how Arab we could be. Um, but this idea of blackness, Abu Uthman, the great Muslim scientist, he writes a book called Glory of the Black Race. And even him in around late 700s, 800 AD, he speaks about anti-blackness and racism within the Arab world. Look how close he was to the time of the prophet. And he's at this time speaking about anti-blackness within the Arab world. Uh, let me read something he wrote. When the white poet Jarir saw El Hakwitan in a white robe on a feast day, he remarked, He looks like the penis of a donkey wrapped in white paper. El Hakwitan replied to him in a poem in which he said, Though my hair is woolly and my skin is black, as coal I am generous and my honor shines. My color does not prevent my being valiant with my sword in battle. So this is around late 700s, 800 AD. And in the beginning, you could still see these people have a problem with blackness. This was another Muslim, a prominent Muslim, coming in to feast with them. That, that's supposedly your brothers, right? And again, I'm not saying everybody is like this. I've definitely met good Arabs. But there's a problem. If we're going to talk about the problem with white people then we're going to talk about the problem with Arabs too. And we're going to talk about this thing of anti-blackness on the entire planet. We're not going to run from it. We're not going to hide from it. We're going to talk about it as it is today, in present times, and it has been over the last thousand, two thousand years. What would happen? When did we become the low class of the planet? Why is there a need for a low class of the planet? What happened? Um, there's this thing 
you know, you see that a lot of the Arabs and other Middle Easterners, they try to say they're people of color and kind of slide over here to the to the brown side or whatever. But uh, the historian Ibn Battuta, possibly the greatest Arab historian, he, re he replies when he's going to uh, Timbuktu in West Africa to see the Muslims there. He really didn't want to go at first. Somebody actually talked him into it. He didn't even want to be around black people, but he keeps replying, you know, this is as far as a white man could go, and this is the end of the white kingdoms, and there are no white men down there, and white men, we cannot go there. And, and, and then it hits you later. You're like, these Arabs think they're white people. Abu Uthman talks about this, and the book is called Glory of the Black Race. Uh, I'm probably going to do a reading of that later. But there's a problem there where these people think that they are black. They think, excuse me, they think that they are white. They think that it's, it's the Germans, the Franks, the Britannians, the English, and then here come the Arabs. Which on a DNA level, that may be true, but through ideology, white people never consider them white. That's, 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 but compared to us, I guess they are white. So, there's this thing of it that's been documented over the centuries and over the millennia of these people having a serious problem with black people, with black Muslims. When you're a Muslim, you're supposed to be all brothers. You're not even supposed to get into a, a fight with each other. You're not even supposed to owe another Muslim money. But somehow, the black has taken a back seat and become the, the cannon fodder and the guardians of, of harems and given no power and the black man is just happy to do that okay well at least i'm not like there's there's a bead over there there's slaves over there i'm i'm something else i'm 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 better than you yeah okay you better than me but nigga you guard the door you do nothing you get tea and coffee for people who wants to be a servant in an evil master's house i'd rather be a king of people from the bush who don't know anything but are kind and good, who know the traditional and the important things of milking cows in the old ways. I'd rather be with them than than be getting mistreated and called a an a, a bead by these people and in a in a huge house. Like what, what's wrong with you? But it's the thing that the black has an inferiority complex. All of us. You never hear a white person say, "Please don't call me white." You only see black people say, "Please don't call me black." And everybody calls you black. It's either, in this case, in the Arab world, it would be Abyssinian, Nubian, or Zanj. Those are the those are the old terms, and they all encompass a black person. Um, Ethiopian maids that go to 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 Saudi Arabia and Kuwait and other places in the Arab world, they go through hell. They get sexually assaulted. They get enslaved. They get their passports taken so they can't even leave, and they're just stuck there, and they get killed. They get tortured. It, it's madness. And you're going to tell me these are some holy people, the holy people of God? Stop. Stop, 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 stop. Again, not everybody. I know oh, you're being racist. You're being racist, brother. No, I'm talking about issues within society on the planet. And I'm talking about the truth. We don't want to We don't want to become like our enemies, but we got to call stuff out when we see it. So let, let's even look back a little further into the... Uh, let, let's, let's look back to when... A people called the Moors ran into Iberia, and that was a, a group of, of Muslims from dang near every ethnicity going into Spain, Iberia, and um, taking over the land, building up, doing a lot of things, and going to war with Christians, with Europeans. Um, Stanley Land Poole, in his book, The Moors, this is a white man, he says that the beginning, the beginning empire, um, the majority of the uh, army was of black Africans. Um, and so that's 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 proof right there of us going into war for Islam, for Islamic brothers, right? But I'm gonna have to ask, can you name one time ever that these people have come to war? come to the aid of black Muslims, ever. I can't name one time. I can't name one time that they have ever said, oh my God, Muslims are in trouble, black Muslims are in trouble. Let's go spread our sword to aid our brothers. Never, never, but I've seen blacks go to war for them. 
you see black people, <laughs> this is so crazy within it. See, this is, you don't want to talk about it, but I got to talk about it. Bombs get dropped on Afghanis. Bombs get dropped on Iraqis. Palestinians are getting beat to a pulp on Ramadan. Black Muslims are getting bombed and killed left and right. And nobody says nothing. They might say something, but they just shrug their shoulders. But if there's even a threat that there might be an invasion of Saudi Arabia, you, you're seeing black Muslims from from down along East Africa saying, oh, if any, if any mosque gets hurt, if one mosque gets destroyed, we are all going to war. We are all going to war. When are they going to war for you, chief? When have they ever gone to war for you? What is wrong with you? Why do you want to be pawns and servants and slaves in another man's castle who is not a worthy lord? I'm not against being a servant. But why, why, why are you ready to go serve and die for these people when they don't give a damn about you? Is it because you really don't worship Allah? You worship Arab instead? Is that what it is? Is Arab your God or is Allah your God? Come on now. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. See, we got a problem and we, we don't want to admit it. Uh, there, there is, there's also a thumb to be pulled against the black and the black Muslim. Um, all along West Africa, and maybe some cases in East Africa too, we have black Muslims actually selling black Muslims into slavery. So you say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. They weren't really Muslims then. Well, whatever, culturally is what they were. We knew they weren't following the religion. I mean, are we going to sit here and say that uh, Europeans in the West who drop bombs and kill millions of people every year, that they're, they're being Christians? That's not what Christianity is. No. But we got this thing of, we have, we have records of uh, Hausa in northern Nigeria selling black Muslims to Christians. We have it in Senegal, too. The higher up ethnicities, tribes, so-called, so they sold the lower ones, even if they practiced Islam. So there's this thing of materialism that, that black people have and being sellouts. So a lot of this thing is, oh, you know, if I dress like this, if I look like this, then I'll be more prestigious and there'll be a lot of more money. And now I'll, I'll get to walk around with my head in the air, with my head in the air. I'll, I'll, I'll be associated with this, with Dubai and Saudi Arabia and the prophet. And listen, we were at the beginning of Islam. We were at the beginning of Christianity. We are at the beginning of just about every religion. All three of these major religions, they can't even say that we weren't a part of it. Because we were. Um, after the tw uh, 12 apostles, after they die, the new 12 apostles that come up, one of them is a black man, Simon and Niger. So not even in the creation of Christianity, but actually in that story, there's a black man in it who spreads Christianity or what will later become Christianity. Um, there's of course Bilal, you know, everybody wants to bring, oh Bilal, you're being racist, Bilal, 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 man, stop, 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 we're tired of hearing about Bilal, see, they'll bring up Bilal, but they weren't going to bring up Abu Uthman, they're not going to bring that up, because he's one of the greatest Muslim scientists, and possibly where Darwin stole his ideas from, possibly, but see, if you start looking into Abu Uthman al jahiz you're going to see this book he wrote, glory of the black race and you're going to say oh whoa whoa, 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 whoa. he's possibly the first pro-black possibly or at least in recent times so yeah there there's an issue with us and our inferiority complex and you got to stand on that black muslim you got it you got to. I, I don't want you to go out and be like oh i hate all arabs because sometimes that does happen people are like oh, i hate arabs i don't want to do nothing with them yada 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 don't don't let it become hatred because there are good arabs they just have a a, a a lot of people on this planet want to be white and that's what comes first from the far east all the way to the west and to the south i don't know when it happened exactly i have some theories but a lot of people don't want to be white and a lot of people have a lot of animosity against the black um whether it's just because that's the thing to do to make you be white or whether it's I said this before I think it has something to do with um, sexual attraction of the black man not feeling like a man when he's around um, and just predominantly our, our docile nature uh, black people are really kind at heart all of us we don't want to see nobody get hurt sometimes you see some really evil people at the top and yeah they are what they are but predominantly 
across Africa and most places, black people don't want to hurt nobody. Not deep, deep down. Uh, so we let people take advantage of us and we do foolish things to try to appease other people. And that's, that's something we need to be called out on. Um, black Muslims are going to have to stand on their own and say, hey, this is how we do Islam. That's, that's how they do it over there. But over here, we, we are good Muslims. And, and this is how we do things. Um, and, and the funny thing is, there's so much anti-blackness against Africans in the Arab world. But you look at them, and you look at their music, and the way they dress now, they've started copying black Americans. And that's one thing we are not with as black Americans. We're not going to sit here and let you act like us and talk like us and try to walk like us. And that's cap. That's cap. And trying to dress like us and trying to be rappers. But meanwhile, you're throwing your African maid out of, out of a window. You're beating your African servants. You hate black people. There's no way a black doesn't care how good of a Muslim he is, how good of a man he is. He cannot marry your sister. But a white man from England can? Like, come on now. Come on. No, 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 no. literally sit up here hating black people and copying black american culture it's it's crazy it, it's crazy if you got a problem with africans or anybody black on the planet i'm gonna need you to stop acting black please stop acting like a black american they'll sit up here and yell at us and tell us we were never the egyptians we weren't any of the moors we were nobody we were just good servants here and there and try to completely write us out of history in cahoots with these europeans but then turn around and start acting like a black American. Steal our culture through the past and steal our culture in present day history. This is crazy. I ain't got no problem with an African rapping, copying black American style. That's like taking your cousin's clothes and putting them on. That's, that's, that's fine. Ain't nobody worried about that. I don't even really care about anybody in the world doing it, but you're not gonna not like black people and then turn around and act like a black American. So I'm gonna need you to stop doing that. That's the hypocritical thing about it. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. But in the end, all I'm going to say is uh, to the black Muslim, if you call yourself a black Muslim, you must read the book Glory of the Black Race by Abu Uthman Al-Jahiz. And I'm going to leave it down in the uh, comment section for you, for you to download and read that thing. Because you, you can't be a black Muslim and not read that book because the man is a genius and he describes an issue that's still going on in the present day, and he talks with such authority and wisdom. It's just, wow. It'll make you proud. He, he was the one who knocked it off. Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, but then the third one was Abu Uthman. All Muslims that helped shape me to who I am, to, to my route. But I'm not saying anyone shouldn't be a Muslim. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, black Muslims, you need to take a page out of the black Christian's book, and you need to stand on your own. What's the saying go? Uh, Bilal is responsible for one third of the pillar of Islam. You must, you must follow suit. The black Muslims must be a pillar who stand on their own by themselves. Don't just go the way, okay? Because these people, they're in bed with the West. And hey, man, they got one coming to them too can't just be up here doing all these things in cahoots with them and thinking there's no no everything that goes around comes around so you should stand on your own you should be staunch good muslims i tell all my muslim brothers my cousins are muslims i say you need to go to senegal those are good muslims there there's like there's a few other places uh tanzania every muslim i've ever met from kazakhstan they were just good people good good people but there's always this problem there's this problem with this one collective the problem is, them people, whatever you say, they run the show. And, 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 again, not all of them, but too many of them. They got a lot of hatred for you. Just for your skin. So y'all keep it up, y'all keep your head up. And, uh, you remember the ones that came before us. Peace.